Today we celebrate with all those who are in heaven. All those men and women and children who are now with God forever in the blessed joy of heaven. This is a day where we remember all those that we have known and loved who have died who are now in heaven. That's why I think it's such a beautiful and special feast day. You know, the, the known saints, the known, those who are, have been beatified and canonized by the church, those are the ones that we know who are in heaven and whose intersection that we see often. But this is the day that we celebrate for all those who are in heaven. And just because they're not one of the canonized or one of the beatified, doesn't mean that we cannot seek their intercession, their prayers for us. See, what we believe is that there is a communion of the saints, that there is a communion of all those baptized here on earth, of all those people of goodwill that are striving for goodness and holiness, that there is a communion among us here on earth. But there is also this communion with the saints in heaven, and a communion with those who those holy souls who are on their way to heaven in purgatory. And that as we pray for and assist those who are in purgatory, those who are in heaven, assist us with their prayers and their intercessions. Mother Angelica said about the saints, and she said, the saints are ordinary people who love Jesus, who try to be like him, and are faithful to the duties of their state in life, and who sacrifice themselves for their neighbor, and those who keep their hearts and minds free of this world. Today, here in the United States, a former parish priest was beatified. It's really a very special day for us in the United States. Father Michael McGivney is now one of the, the official blessed of the church. He was a regular parish priest. You could say he was kind of like your typical parish priest. He, in a way, did nothing out of the ordinary as regards to what parish priests do. Yet he started the Knights of Columbus. He's the founder of the Knights of Columbus. And probably without having done that, many people would not know anything about him, let alone have proposed that he should be beatified. He had two brothers that also became priests. And they're basically un unknown to history. But today in, uh, um, in Connecticut, they celebrated the beatification mass for this parish priest, who we now call Blessed Michael McGivney. Really, you could say he's a, a, a model for day-to-day -day blue collar holiness, to which every parish priest and every person is called. They said that uh, he wasn't uh, uh, he wasn't a Saint Augustine in the pulpit. He wasn't a Saint Thomas in the classroom. He wasn't a Saint Charles for Mayo in administration of the parish. Or he wasn't a Saint Padre Pio who bore the stigmata and had mystical gifts. He was simply Father Michael McGivney who sought the best that he could to respond to his priestly vocation and the work given to him and trusted to him. But he did it with all of his heart, with the greatest love that he could, being as faithful as he possibly could to what God had put in front of him. So in a way, he lived out his priestly ministry just like the priest in our own parish here, visiting the sick, ministering to those who are hurting, reaching out to the lost and the confused, visiting the imprisoned, 
He was very involved with activities for the youth. He reached out in a special way to those who were poor, especially the poorer families in his parish. And you know, when he founded the Knights of Columbus, it was like so many other organizations that get founded in parishes. Except the Knights of Columbus became a worldwide organization. You know, today there's, they say there's more than two million knights in the world. And St. Mary's has one of the oldest Knights of Columbus councils in the state of Tennessee. He founded it really to help men have a sense of fraternity, that they could hold each other accountable, that they could band together to do good works. It is also an organization that um, began to sell insurance early on to help families when they lost especially the breadwinner of the family. He was very concerned about what happened with families when the father would die. Back in those days, in the late 1800s, it was very, very difficult for a family when the, when the father died of the family. You know, he died when he was only 38 years old. At that time, the, the Knights of Columbus had only been 10 years old, were only 10 years old. Just look at the good that this simple parish priest was able to do because of his love for God and his love for his people. Now you hopefully have read some stuff about this, but the, the miracle that happened for his beatification happened to a couple from Dickinson, Tennessee. It was a Daniel and Michelle, um, I believe their last name is, is, is pronounced Shackley. They were pregnant with their 13th child. Yes, that still happens in our day and age. Very interestingly, Father Michael, blessed Michael McGivney, was the oldest child in his family, and he had 12 brothers and sisters. So this couple were pregnant with their 13th child. He's a member of the Knights of Columbus, very much involved in the in the uh, in the Knights of Columbus, and has been for many years. They got a diagnosis uh, very shortly into the pregnancy that the child in, in utero had both Down syndrome and something called fetal hydrox. Fetal hydrox is a life-threatening buildup of the fluid and the tissue around the heart and the lungs and the abdomen. The doctor who would they, that they were seeing said those combined conditions, those two conditions together, meant that this child had zero chance of survival. No chance. So the family decided that they were going to seek the intercession of, of Father McGivney. He was a patron saint of their family. They homeschooled their kids and they named their homeschool after Father, uh, Father McGivney. So they've been married 22 years. They sent emails out, put it up on Facebook. Sent the word out to all their family and all their friends. Pray to Father Michael McGivney for our child. The doctors had encouraged them to go ahead and induce the child early. They didn't recommend letting nature take its course. They said there was no way it was impossible for this child to, to survive. But they didn't give up hope in the intercession of Father of Blessed now, Michael McGibbon. They kept praying and kept reaching out to their family and friends and asking for Blessed Michael McGibbon's prayers. He had won a trip to Europe, a pilgrimage with the Knights of Columbus. They talked with their doctors and they said, well, we don't know when this child is going to die in your womb, but you could probably go on this trip. 
So they went on the trip, and it was while they were in Fatima that Michelle, the wife, received a sense from God that he was going to heal this child. She said, I didn't know for sure that it had happened, but I had an overwhelming sense of peace during Mass while we were in Fatima that God was going to heal this child through Father McGibbon. They said they were praying and asking for that Father McGibbon would give them this miracle. They knew that the only way that this child would survive would be by a miracle. There's a quote from her. She said, in my heart I basically said, let this baby be the miracle because that means that he will live and this will pass from us. And she said she remembers praying, you know, God, if this baby dies, I'll still love you, but I don't know how I'm going to survive this. So when they came back from that trip, they went to the doctor. They were in their 20th week of pregnancy. The doctor, um, uh, they went in and did an ultrasound. They said that they took a long time in coming back into the room. Finally, the doctor walked in and started talking about when my baby is born. And she said, she looked up and said, Doctor, we've been told that there's no hope about this baby. And that's when she said that the doctor realized that this was the baby that had hydrox syndrome. They said, well, what name have you thought about giving to your, to your baby? And they said, his name is Michael. Named after Father, Blessed Michael McGibney. Daniel and Michelle and Michael and their family all were present for the beatification of Blessed Michael McGibney. Isn't it beautiful what God does? He incorporates the saints and us in the work of building his kingdom. God loves it when his saints are honored. As I said at the beginning of this homily that all of us are called to be saints. And this day we remember those in our own family and among our parish here, our extended family, co-workers, who are now in heaven. And while they may not be beatified and canonized, we can definitely seek their intercession, and I often do. Saints are ordinary people who love Jesus with everything in them. They're now in heaven, and they're interceding for us. So let us call on that intercession each and every day, and let us imitate how they live and how they 